friends, I'm Carrie, children's librarian at Warren Trumbull County Public Library. Our new youth space has a really neat design that celebrates the unique history of our community, especially its connections to planes, trains, and automobiles. Today, we're going to be talking about one of those connections at the National Packard Museum, where we can learn more about Packard automobiles. I'm here with my friend Annie Talmadge of the National Packard Museum to show us around. Annie, what can you tell us about the Packard family? Well, the Packard family actually moved to Austintown in 1801. Not too long after that, in 1850, Warren Packard, the father, moved to Warren, Ohio to start his lumber and hardware business. In 1890, J.W. and W.D. Packard, they started Packard Electric and the rest is history. So we're standing here in front of the Packard Model F. Right? This is the same car that drove from San Francisco to New York City in 61 days, correct? It is the same model, yes. Wow, how fast did it go? So this model popped out at about 25 miles per hour, but they didn't have the best braking system. So I imagine going down the Rocky Mountains was one heck of a trip. Wow. Now, it doesn't have a windshield. Right, they were not overly concerned about safety at the time. So if they needed to, they would wear goggles but because the car didn't go really fast, they didn't, they weren't concerned about it. Does that mean they got bugs in their teeth? I'm sure it did. <laughs> now, did it have a horn? It did have a horn. I can show you right. So how did the Packard brothers get started in building cars? JW actually bought his first car at an automotive manufacturer up in Cleveland. However, the trip home was a little rough. He, the car kept breaking down and Packard was not happy at all. After going back and forth with the manufacturer, the manufacturer told him, if you can build a better car, then you go ahead and do it. And that is exactly what JW did. And when did he build his first car? The first car was built in 1899 and it was actually built in the Packard electric lamp plant, which was on Dana Street. Annie, tell me about these fancy statues on the front of the cars. So all of these little statues are called hood ornaments, and originally they were just fancy radiator caps. They would take them off and be able to access the radiator if they needed to. However, there are a lot of different kinds that Packard produced throughout the years. The most famous is the Goddess of Speed. That's the one with the lady with the wings that has the tire in the front. We also have the Adonis and the Coromont as well. Did kids ride in cars? Kids would ride in cars. Uh, oftentimes safety was not a big concern, so they would either sit on the laps of the adults in the front, or they would also sit up front. Most of the cars you see in our museum would have an option to have a back seat put in the back, but oftentimes they would not have one. Did they have car seats? They did not have car seats, no. What about seat belts? No seat belts either. It's very different from what it is today. Annie, these cars are so long. They're like as long as our limousines are today. How many gallons of gas did it hold? This car in particular held about 20 gallons of gas. And how much did gas cost at that time? Gas was about 29 cents a gallon, so very different from today. How far could it go on a tank of gas? This car got about 10 miles per gallon, so it could only go 200 miles with one fill up. And that is about half of the fuel economy that we have today in our cars. Annie, thanks so much for showing me around the museum today. Oh, you are so welcome. I'm glad you stopped by. And I hope that you've really enjoyed learning too. So stop by the National Packard Museum. And while you're here, just down the road is the Warren Library. Be sure to check out some cool books on automotive history and how cars are made. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>